This is every integral I could find online and I'm going to explain every one of them. 1. Indefinite integral. This is just your standard type of integral. It basically means antiderivative. So if you have a polynomial function then to find the indefinite integral you simply take each term, add 1 to the power, then divide by the new power. It's that simple. Don't forget to whack a plus c on the end because when you find the derivative the constants just disappear. So of course when finding the antiderivative the constants just going to reappear. Unlike your dad. 2. Definite integral. A definite integral will have two numbers next to the integral sign. These are called the limits and to solve this you do the exact same thing you did with the indefinite integral only instead of adding c at the end you add something called the integral bar around it. Now to evaluate the integral bar you just write the equation again but with the, all the x's replaced with the top limit and then subtract the entire equation again only this time replacing all the x's with the bottom limit. This should give you a number at the end and this number is actually the area under the curve of the graph we originally integrated and bounded by the upper and lower limits. But whatever you do, don't say to a girl you like, I wish I was your definite integral because then I would occupy the area under all your curves because last time I tried that I was banned from the daycare center. 3. Improper integrals. But what about if you have a function like 1 over x squared and you want to know the area under the curve from 1 to infinity? Well, you can't can't just go about sticking infinity into the upper limit because that's just improper. It's a bit like sticking fine wine into a polystyrene cup. Any normal person doesn't care where you put the fine wine, but a pretentious wine taster will consider this blasphemy. Likewise, any normal person doesn't care whether you put infinity directly into the integral, but a pretentious mathematician will tell you that's not actually correct, and instead, you should add a temporary variable and use a limit, even though that just takes more time to get to the same answer. 4. Double integral. Instead of just finding areas under curves, we can use the double integral to find volumes under surfaces. As the name suggests, you do this by simply integrating integrating twice. So for this surface we first integrate with respect to x, meaning everything else is treated as a constant, and then we integrate with respect to y, and the result is the volume under this surface. 5. Triple integral. Same exact thing as before, only instead of two integrals there's now three. Generally you won't need any more than two, but if you do these are called iterated integrals. 6. Line integral. This is used to find the area under parametric curves, which are curves defined using a third variable or parameter. C is a parametric curve, for example we define c as x equals t when y equals t squared from t equals 0 to 1 and to find the result of this line integral we just substitute the x and y, differentiate to find dx and dy and substitute those in and evaluate the integral like normal. 7. Surface integral. This is a lot like the line integral added a new dimension so we just substitute our values to get an answer. 8. Sigma male integral. Now if you're a beta male then you might not understand this but us sigma males know that approximations are always better than the exact value. Especially especially when the approximation takes more time and energy to work out than the actual value. And that's why we have sigma male integrals. You see, a definite integral as stated before is just the area under the curve. So instead of trying to work out the antiderivative, why don't we just chop up the curve into nice trapeziums and work out the area by adding the areas of each trapezium together. In other words, why don't we just do this? Notice how this method actually contains sigma and the others don't. 9. Contour integral. Instead of just integrating over a line or a surface, is we're now integrating over a path in the complex world. So now everything is in terms of complex numbers and your function is being evaluated along this path. Thanks to the Cauchy integral and residue theorem, you can often evaluate these integrals without even doing the full thing. However, because imaginary numbers aren't real, contour integrals don't exist. We just made them up. 10. Steelerichels integral. You know how in normal integrals we integrate with respect to x? Well, the Steelerichels integral says, what if the thing you integrate with respect to isn't a nice smooth variable, but instead moves around however it likes? So instead of just dx, you get d of gx, where g is some function that controls how you take the integral. This lets you deal with situations where things change in weird discrete steps like stock prices. 11. Lebesgue integral. What if, instead of slicing your function vertically like in the Riemann integral, you slice it horizontally? Or what if I went outside and randomly screamed at a bunch of pigeons? 12. Fractional integral. A fractional integral is like asking what happens if we integrate a function but halfway or a third way. You define it using something like the gamma function but the core idea is you're now operating somewhere between differentiation and integration. 13. Path integral. A path integral often seen in quantum mechanics instead of just finding one trajectory of a particle you sum over all possible paths a particle would take. Yes, all of them. Even the stupid ones. Even the ones where it flips backwards through 
time and space and pretends to be your dad just for a day just to leave you once again to rub salt in the wounds. Every path gets a score called phase and the final answer is a combination of all of these possibilities. 14. Bochner Integral What if the thing you're integrating isn't just a number but a vector? Sound terrifying? Well that's because it is. Ah! But it's super fun and useful in functional analysis and fancy differential equations. 15. Ito Integral If you're thinking all of these methods of integration are far too simple for my massive gigabrain, then you should try integrating with respect to Brownian motion. The Ito Integral is exactly what you need when your variable just so happens to be making random, unpredictable movements through time and space. Although it sounds far-fetched, this can actually be used in gambling strategies, although you need a relatively high IQ to actually apply this properly. 79! Oh my god! 16. Skibbity Toilet Integral Skibbity, skibbity, skibbity toilet. 17. Daniel Integral The Daniel Integral doesn't even start with functions. It starts with linear functionals on simple functions, whatever that means. Historically important in the development of Lebesgue Integrals, but nowadays it mostly lives in the nightmares of grad students. 18. Hadamard Integral You know how when you take an integral you simply multiply by dx or something? Well, the Hadamard Integral makes it logarithmic. So the kernel, the thing you're integrating with, involves logarithms instead of powers. You'll probably never use it though. 19. Wiener Integral integral. Named after Norbert Wiener, a man who was definitely never bullied in school, this is used in probability theory particularly when dealing with Brownian motion and stochastic processes. 20. Path integral over supermanifolds. You know how earlier we mentioned how path integrals sum over all possible paths a particle could take? Well, it turns out that space-time might actually be 11-dimensional. So once you exhausted all the other integrals, you could give that a go. You'll notice how towards the end my descriptions of these integrals became brief and superficial. That's because most of these have zero practical uses in the real world, so I'm not going to learn them just to make this video. However, if you want to learn them anyway, then I suggest you go to another channel where someone who's smarter than me can explain it properly to you. So piss off.